my everything all I need you are all I need you are Jesus Jesus my heart is yours you are the center of my life and sing it one more time you're my everything, all I need you are, all I need you are, Jesus my heart is yours, you are the center of my center of our life once again we should keep singing that part again Matt sing it you are the center everything let that be our prayer come on Jesus my you center of my life you're my everything all I need you are all I need you are Jesus my heart is yours you are the center of I'm going to take altar ministry time after my sermon, but before that, if I go into my sermon, I want to know how many of you really mean those words that we just sang. Jesus, I want you to be the center of my life. Raise your hands and make that prayer. Jesus, we really want you to be the center of our lives of our church, of our families, of our city, of our nation. Make that prayer, church, come on. Speak it out to him. Jesus, be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. If something else has taken my place, taken that place, God, I say, I renew my decision once again. Jesus, be the center of our lives. Father, as a church, we look upon your face and say, be the center of our lives. We want you to be the center of our attention, the focus of our church, of our personal lives. You rule in our lives. You reign. You reign, O oh Lord. We give you the freedom. We pray that you would take control. You would overpower us. You would empower us. Be glorified. Be glorified. Thank you for your presence in this place. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Give a clap offering to God in this place. Come on. Lift it up. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. What a joy it is. What a, what a uh, place to be in God's presence. Thank you, Matt and the worship team. Give a round of applause to our worship team. They always do a great job. And uh, do you enjoy the baptism service? Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't that a celebration? Yeah. When uh, souls get added to the family of God, when people of God uh, decide to make a public proclamation of their faith and say, I am here to follow Jesus. And to display their faith in front of the whole world. Hallelujah. And I pray this would be an inspiration to many of you who have not yet taken that decision that in these coming days, uh, the Spirit of God would work in your hearts to make that bold step and say, Jesus, I love you so much that I want to obey every single command that you have given me. And if this is what is stopping me, I'm, I'm, here I am. I'm going to follow the commandment of being baptized to say that I become one, I conform to the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. We've been having a um, heavy presence of the Holy Spirit throughout our services, and especially today, I feel in my spirit there is an amazing uh, Holy Spirit presence that keeps moving so boldly, so powerfully, that is literally taking over our hearts and our minds, our services. And I hope and pray that you would feel the same here in this place. Folks, we, are in, uh, we, are ent- we have already entered um, a period where the Spirit of God has decided to move in unprecedented ways. And uh, we have al- already seen steps of revival happening. And uh, we as a church, as pastors, uh, we as uh, leaders of this church, we have not decided to give up and be satisfied with what we have right now, but we have decided to move forward, to strive for more, yearn for more. And we believe uh, there is a huge group, a large group that is uh, joining us to receive more and more from the Holy Spirit, to yearn for more of the Lord. We're never satisfied with what we have. I always say he is too good to be satisfied with what we have right now. He is too good. We haven't tasted a bit of his goodness yet. All we have seen is nook and corners of that. But the more we taste, the more he is so addictive. We just fall in love more and more to him. Hallelujah. In this season, we need a a stronger, consistent revival. You see, there is a tendency... Uh, we, have, we have reached this place where we feel really enriched and empowered by the Holy Spirit, yeah? From a state where things have been okay, okay, and then past a few months, the Lord has been really stirring up our hearts. And we have really reached that point where we really feel it is happening. Amen. It is happening every Sunday, every service, every prayer meeting. I'm not just talking about a Sunday service, but if you haven't yet come to the Thursday morning, Thursday evening, Tuesday evening... So many prayer meetings happening everywhere. It is, uh, it is so visibly, tangibly, you can experience the presence of God. So it's really clear that the Holy Spirit has decided to move and he is moving. But it becomes really a point where we can get stuck at that level. Oh, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And then we are satisfied with that feeling. And I've been praying because... You see, the Holy Spirit has been leading. Uh, we have not been decide, deciding uh, our sermon topics after discussions, but we just come up with it. The Lord lays in our hearts. And I see God has been taking us in a proper syllabus towards revival, a proper teaching, proper building. He is mending things. He is doing perfectly, aligning every Sunday after Sunday. And I prayed upon the Lord, and uh, um, he impressed upon my heart to speak So that, speak about something to take this revival forward. We have reached this saturation point where usually churches or people get stuck. Right? But we want to go forward. And what can help us? It is the Holy Spirit. The Lord has impressed upon my heart to speak to you today and for a couple of sermons following that I will be doing here about the Holy Spirit. Because I believe, you see, if... uh, There has to be something that make a change. It is only the Holy Spirit. If there is something that can take us forward to break those barriers, break those uh, boundaries that we are used to, it is only the Holy Spirit who can do that. Hallelujah. Are you ready for more of the Holy Spirit? Are you excited for the Holy Spirit? Are you yearning for more of him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn with me, please, to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18. I would title my sermon this morning, Plug into Power. Plug into Power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, 18. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. I'm reading from the NLT. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill and control you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. If you have your mobile phones, open your Bible app. Ephesians 5, 18. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill and control you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A question usually arises. How to be filled by the Holy Spirit? Once uh, I was attending a youth camp 
and a pastor, a mentor, he asked me, Jubin, how are you sure that you are filled with the Holy Spirit? I was taken aback. Uh, how do I say? How do I say I am? This question might uh, trigger your minds as well. How do you, do you, are you sure you're filled? How do you know? Or for some others, the question might be, how can I be filled by the Holy Spirit? Or what is the filling of the Holy Spirit? Or why do I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? You see, the most important principle of a consistent spiritual life, a progressive spiritual life, is a life with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You see that? To be consistent, to be progressive in Christian life, and to not be stuck at that particular level where everybody gets stuck. Most of them get stuck. Because we are still in the Holy Spirit. We have reached that level, attained that level where we can feel Him. He is there. But how do you go forward? Amen. You need a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. Like the ozone layer covers the atmosphere, there can be a bubble that stops us. It is still high. You're still high up in, in the air, but there is a bubble. I pray that the Holy Spirit would help us break that bubble and pursue forward to receive, uh, uh, receive levels of the Holy Spirit that is never, never, we have never reached that place. I really feel we would go deeper into God's presence, deeper into our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Dr. J. Vernon, um, an amazing man of God, he was giving an address to Dallas Theological Seminary. He spoke these words. He was at his 80, early 80s and nearing the end of a long and fruitful ministry. He said these words. If I was to start my ministry over again, I would give much more attention to the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. After 80 years of being in ministry, he said, if I were to go back and start my ministry all over again, I would give more importance to the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Charles Spurgeon, the greatest uh, speaker, uh, preacher of the 19th century, he said, the grandest thing the church wants at this time is God's Holy Spirit. Is God's Holy Spirit. Salem Church, what we need at this time is more and more of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. More and more of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Diving into our text, Ephesians 5.18. I have a couple of different translations here. And Ivy says, do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. New Living Translation, what we just read, says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill and control you. Eugene Peterson, in the message uh, version, he says, don't drink too much wine. That cheapens your life. Drink the Spirit of God. Huge droughts of Him. Drink from Him. You see, there is a clear contrast between wine and the Holy Spirit given here. A huge contract. The contrast the most basic point uh, is the point of control. The point of control. Which is, not, which is not really easy to give up. The point of control. A person who is drunk by wine, his whole decision making is altered. He is controlled by another force, another power. He's not thinking straight. He or she is not speaking what they intend to do. The decisions taken are negative. Usually burst of anger. Usually leading to depression. Usually leading to suicidal ideations. Usually leading to self-harm. To a destructive life. He is being controlled. He or she is being controlled by a negative force. It is not the real person. Something similar, part of that is similar to when you are being filled by the Holy Spirit. You are being absolutely controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is not you who speak. It is not you who behave. It is not you, but the Spirit of God does it through you. The Spirit of God takes over the control of our lives. Paul, in the four um, verses above and below, he gives a... Uh, specific ways where the Spirit of God can take control. Read with me Ephesians 5 uh, verses 15 onwards. He says, so be careful how you live. 
Listen, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make most out of every opportunity in these evil days. We live in evil days. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to make right decisions. Amen. To discern things. Amen. There are tens and tens and hundreds of churches in Thunder Bay itself. There are tons and tons of gospels. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to discern which one is true, which one is not. You go to YouTube, endless supply of sermons, endless supply of theologies, endless supply of interpretations. Same verse can be interpreted, interpreted in multiple ways. You need the Spirit of God to help you discern which one is right, which one is wrong. People of God, hear it out. You need discernment. You need the Spirit of God to discern what is right and wrong. Everything that you see is not right. Everything that you see with the label of Jesus Christ is not true. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you have wisdom for living in this evil age. Verse 17. Don't act thoughtlessly. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. Understanding the will of God. Oh, ain't that a, an amazing topic? I want to know the will of God in my, in my, for my future, for my studies, for my family life. How do you understand the will of God? How do you understand if this is from God? Attain more of the Holy Spirit. Get more of the Holy Spirit. There is no other shortcut. Attain more of the Holy Spirit. Verses 90. Don't be drunk by wine. But because that will ruin your life. Instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourself. And making music to the Lord in your hearts. Yeah. When the Holy Spirit comes into your heart. A joyful heart filled with singing to the Lord. Amen. Back in India in my church we had a family. Who were neck deep in poverty. Neck deep. They, would, uh, they wouldn't turn on their lights or their fans. And in India, it is uh, 40 or 32, 35 or 40 degrees Celsius. It's, it's crazy hot. They wouldn't turn on their lights or fans because it would take electricity and they, would have, they wouldn't have money to pay their bills. At the lowest of their, at the bottom. But the, but the way you see them come to church, mom, dad, and two brothers, to, to uh, sons. The way you see them come to church, you would think they come from a, a palace where they have a hundred servants to serve them. So much joy. So much peace. Not once have I heard uh, that dear brother saying, oh, you know, it's, it's really hard. I don't know how they do it. So much positivity reflecting from them so much encouragement he's in the prayer team and when he prays people are blessed i don't know how they do it i once sat with uh, him and asked him his name is dennis he's no more uncle how do you do it he said i don't know it's just the holy spirit it's just the holy spirit it's just the Holy Spirit. Even when you are at your lowest, uh, the Spirit of God in you can turn your heart to experience uh, joy and peace. It doesn't make sense to the world. It doesn't make sense to the world. But when you can still smile and say, I have peace and bless another person, that is the Holy Spirit. Is that what you need? Your answer is the Holy Spirit. Verses 20, give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A heart filled with thanksgiving. A heart filled with thanksgiving. A heart filled with thanksgiving. Not easy. It is easy to say thanks when you have things that you need. But when you don't have things, it's hard. But when you have the Spirit of God, He will help you to be content with whatever you have. Be content with whatever you have. He will help you. It is not easy in this world. A person who have no uh, modes of transport, when he see a person in a bicycle, he will, oh, I wish I had a bicycle like that. 
If when he gets gets a bicycle, he was oh, I wish I had a bike like that, a motorcycle. If he has one, he says oh, I wish I had a car. Driving in a car, he'll say oh, I wish I had a a four wheeler. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a an RV. I don't know. <laughs> We're never satisfied. Never satisfied. Never satisfied. But the Holy Spirit can help us to be content with what we have. You know what happens? The Spirit of God takes away our focus from worldly things. He puts our focus to Jesus because He is all in all. He is everything. He becomes your greatest treasure. He becomes your greatest possession. One thing I love in the Old Testament is uh, when uh, uh, when God gave different portions of treasures for every tribe of Israel. When He came to the tribe of Levi, He said, "I am not giving you any worldly possession. Do you know why? Because I am your possession. I am your possession. There is no greater possession than being in Jesus Christ. He is all you need." He has everything we need. You need the Holy Spirit to imprint that deeper into our lives. Verses twenty-one and further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit helps us to give an attitude of mutual submission. That's where I want to dwell. The Holy Spirit gives us an attitude of mutual submission. You know why this is really important? Because to give up the control over our lives means to break our ego, to break the me, the I, to break, to shatter that control that I have over my life and give it over to the Holy Spirit. Because you don't have any more control over your life. You got to obey what the spirit of God says. And sometimes uh, I always say, see the altar in the tabernacle in the Old Testament, the altar where you lay sacrifices and burn the incense to God, it had four horns and four corners. You know why? I I've, I've read uh, Charles Spurgeon in one of his sermons. He said, "You see these horns have one need. You know why? Because the 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 flesh that you keep on the altar is slippery. It's slippery. There is a tendency for it to slip out of the altar. So you need to hook it so that it doesn't run out, doesn't slide out. God, I'm offering you myself as a living sacrifice. Here I am, O oh Lord. But on Monday, ah, uh, I'll come back next Sunday. Tuesday, I'm slipping. I'll I'll be back next Sunday. There's a tendency tendency to slip out. Easy to take decisions, but to stay on a decision is really hard. That's when we need to plug ourselves, hook ourselves at the altar. That means giving the Holy Spirit perfect control over our lives. Amen. You might lose on some pleasures of this world, but we but. What you are going to get in heaven is nothing compared to what you receive here. When we explain this to people, they'll say, "What is the point of losing all of this in this world and looking forward for something that you're not sure of?" Oh yeah, you're not sure because you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. That's when I pray. It's you need the Holy Spirit to gain that surety, that assurance that I have a hope laid for something greater something greater because i ha- i am looking forward for that very world but i will live with my lord and savior for eternity you need the holy spirit to give you that deep conviction that's why salvation is a work of the holy spirit purely the work of the holy spirit you can explain theology a to z systematic theology modern theology this and that to a person i the holy spirit is not at work ain't no benefit but you can tell them jesus heals just those two words and if the holy spirit is at work he will kneel down and cry out and accept jesus that is the power of the holy spirit just let me tell you the holy spirit infilling of the holy spirit is not an option in christian life 
it is a command paul says be filled by the holy spirit it is not an option it is a command you do it everybody who has become a christian who accepted jesus need to yearn more and more for the holy spirit it is not an option it is not a use and throw option it is a command that god gives us it is a command that we have to follow be filled by the holy spirit Paul says it in the present continuous tense. When you study the original language, he says it in the present continuous, which means be filled. Be continue to be filled. Be constantly filled and controlled. Constantly. John MacArthur, the amazing Bible commentator, he said, be being kept filled by the Holy Spirit. ever be filled and stimulated by the holy spirit it is not just the three hours that we spend at church it is not just those little hours that we feel goosebumps when we hear the song no that's not that's not just the holy spirit that's just no he cannot be contained to a part of our lives he comes with us wherever we go he comes with us wherever wherever we go the filling of the holy spirit is supposed to be a normalcy in christian life in filling of the holy spirit is supposed to be a normal thing in christian life two things i want you to notice in that verse be filled by the holy spirit he doesn't say fill yourself with the holy spirit you see he doesn't paul doesn't say fill yourself with the holy spirit no because we can't do it it is not our words it is the work of god amen when i say pastor yamo be blessed he doesn't he doesn't go to my office and take some blessings and pour it on us no he just waits upon the lord to receive it similarly be filled by the holy spirit you don't go in search of the holy no you wait you prepare your life and wait so that i receive the holy spirit it is done by god number 2 make ourselves available for the outpouring Amen. two things i want you to dwell the holy spirit is ready and willing to fill us at any moment he is willing number 2 make ourselves available Amen. make ourselves available when you go to the gas station and tell them fill up my gas it means two things number 1 your tank is empty Number 2 I want my car to be filled. When you come to the presence of God and say fill me Lord it has to imply two things. You're empty. Number 2 you have a need and a desire to be filled. If we are filled with junk of this world you cannot expect the holy spirit to be filled in you. That is a sad reality. If I have the different things that are filled in my heart, I cannot expect the Holy Spirit to come and fill me again because you cannot fill an already filled jar. Bishop T.D. Jakes makes this prayer. I remember he prays God instead of pay, praying use me, he prays God make me usable. We keep if we keep praying use me use me and our life is not yet usable to Lord what is the point so we pray God make me usable I read this word fillability I don't know if that is even a word but fillability the ability to be filled it denotes two things emptiness and openness emptiness and openness let this be days when we strip ourselves of everything that has filled our hearts Amen. so that there is place for the holy spirit to fill emptiness and openness willingness willingness 
when your need to be filled with the spirit becomes your greatest desire you will be filled do you get that when your need to be filled by the holy spirit becomes your greatest desire your need and your desire clubs together and that's when the sole focus of your life becomes the holy spirit that's when he pours out his spirit upon us there is a, there are a few issues that stop us right at this point the issue of control the issue of control if a man is filled with anger anger controls his life if a man is filled with greed everything they do will be out of greed if a man is filled with love everything he does will be out of love i remember reading through watching a documentary of an incident that happened back in india a woman she got married to a very very wealthy family she was so easily caught up by the riches the, the richness the wealth of this family she annihilated seven members of that family through the span of 12 years just to get the the wealth after she did she murdered the last person she was caught she is spending her time in jail greed whatever is filled in you can dominate your life whatever is filled in your life can dominate our life the holy spirit comes for control by consent very important he doesn't barge in and take authority without you giving it to him he takes control by consent amen if you just say ah it's okay not that okay holy spirit stay back he won't but if you have the emptiness and the openness holy spirit will soothe into our lives i really pray that these words will be imprinted in your hearts so strong that it wouldn't give you peace unless you have an open an empty heart what does it mean to be led by the holy spirit i'll give you a simple example when you go out with a little child you're going to going through the mall what usually it does the little child holds your hand right they hold your hand and they'll take you so you'll be going he'll see a toy uh, shop he'll drag you to the toy shop and you'll go oh, so nice and then he'll see another shop ice cream shop oh let's go he is holding your hand right you come out of the intercity mall you about to cross the traffic what do you do you don't let him drag you leave that hand and you hold his hand right and when he says oh there's a car you'll say no no you're staying here you take him where you go that is being led by the holy spirit Amen. when you're in the mall he held your hand that is walking by the holy spirit you walk by you have the spirit you use him when you need he's in your pocket when you're facing exams oh, holy spirit help me when you passed bye bye see you next time when you have problems with your relationship holy spirit help me when it's all solved see you next time when you need a job when you need a car when you need a house built when you need pr whatever it is where the holy spirit takes control he wouldn't let you just go here and there he would say this is the path i have designed destined for you Amen. you walk Amen. in that path and that will always be the best path that is called being led by the holy spirit being led by the holy spirit it's not always easy but it is the best path there is an issue of cooperation You see how new believers experience so much joy. Have you seen that? Can you go back to that day when you were saved? Oh, the amount of joy that you had. The celebration. As those that got baptized today, the moment you come out of water, there is something oh so unexplainable, indescribable joy. Because you're filled with the Holy Spirit. It is overflowing in you. 
all of us went through that period but as time passes by that feeling reduces feeling reduces the same for me same for you same for everybody it reduces because there is an issue of cooperation sometimes we don't feel oh holy spirit uh, i don't want you to cooperate so much too much this is too much okay just so many of us struggle at precisely this point we fight the lord because we want to do things our way we want to do things our way you see people of israel didn't have a king they started asking for a king we need a king all the other nations they have a king god said no you don't need a king don't go that road it's going to be harmful you don't need i will be your king i will provide everything you see what i did for you i parted the red sea i brought quail and manna for you i did all of those things water out of the rock you don't need a king people of israel said we need a king okay go to, you you okay take a king not long after the nation is divided worldly leaders lead them to idol practices to pagan gods the wrath of god comes the book of judges they come to the presence of god they cry they go back 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 <sighs> couple of summers weeks back i spoke this word and i'm glad uh, a brother called me and asked me he needed clarification on that i was really happy if we take a break expect god to take a break the reason i said that was sometimes god will say okay you want it your way let it be so he'll do that he'll take the hedge of protection over out and we we are allowed to go that wrong path god said it's wrong god knows it's wrong you know it's wrong because you're not with god and you go down that wrong road and you suffer and suffer and you cry you tear your broken you devastated and then you come back and look back god is still waiting at that cross road and you got to walk this walk of shame back to that cross road hold his hand and take the right road again the good thing is god doesn't stand there say i told you so he just accepts us with wide open arms and he say it's okay come on let's go that is our loving god you can never be far never 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 ever far where god cannot god's love cannot reach you you're never too far where god's love cannot reach you let me repeat the word i read in a book you got the holy spirit but has the holy spirit got you you got the holy spirit but has the holy spirit got us has he taken control over our lives does he say what we need to speak does he give us thoughts does he control our behaviors openness emptiness i'll tell you the next step to revival is this my dear church more of the holy spirit amen more of the holy spirit we need the holy spirit more than ever before more than ever before we live our, our kids oh i wish they were here to listen to this sermon they need the holy spirit more than any of us in schools they walk into evil territory amen they need the holy spirit our colleges our universities they need the holy spirit the devil is lurking elders you need the holy spirit the devil is trying to take control of your mind saying what a life you've got you're alone you didn't gain anything take control young men and young women the devil is right by your door waiting for a chance to take control one power that can save you from all of this is the holy spirit is the holy spirit 
is to yearn for the Holy Spirit more and more. His power is always available. Always available. Always available. Let me repeat this again. Imagine trying to fill up a jar that is already full of something. You cannot fill it. Because it's already full. Or imagine an empty jar with a lid on top of it. You cannot fill it. Because it's closed. Might be empty but it's closed. You need openness. You need emptiness. Make this prayer today. Lord I'm empty. And I need to be filled. By your head church. Make this prayer. Lord I'm empty. And I need to be filled. That's why. In the sermon on the mount. Is written. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For they will be satisfied. Salem Church, what we need next is the Holy Spirit. A thirst, a never ending, never quenched, never ending thirst for the Holy Spirit. Never ending thirst for the Holy Spirit. Music team, come. Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name. Let there be a sense of need. Tell him, Lord, I'm empty and I need to be filled by your spirit. I'm empty, Lord. I need to be filled. Lord, I'm open to you. Let your spirit fill me now. Help me to set you as the priority of my life. Let me pray this prayer with you can pray it with me. God, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I might live a life pleasing to you. I want my life to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. I accept I am empty and I need to be filled. Thank you for forgiving my sins through the death of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to indwell in me. Please empower me so that I can be the salt and light in my world. I pray this in faith. Believing that you will answer my prayers. As you have promised. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. If you feel you're ready. Open and empty. Would you stand where you are? If you have a thirst in your heart for more of the Holy Spirit. If you feel... That's the next step that I I'm going to take. This is not just for the first time believer, no. It's for the seasoned believer. It's for the beginner. It's for everybody. I need it more than you do. You need it more than I do. All of us. If you feel you need more of the Holy Spirit, take this time. To surrender our lives. Open and empty. Open and empty. Open and empty. Open and empty. Let the remashem karamasi antoro doro robosh. Sente rekada na ramali akmana ribiyash. Re rabash antoro doro. Rebarabarabashedere de lere de basi. Shentere manamasi antana.